As a Palantir shareholder, if you could major, wave a magic wand to fix or improve three areas of Palantir's business, what would you pick? I think the business model is brilliant. Um, I love it. I hadn't experienced a company like it before, um, experiencing it five, six years ago when I first did. And I've yet to meet a company like it uh, in the past five to six years. Operations, I think they did things really well. I think the only complaints that I have about the operations piece was from our, our company side, um, not allowing them um, a little bit more freedom or allowing us to have a little bit more freedom as engineers. Um, but from Palantir side, I feel like they did as much as they could and they did great with it. The share-based compensation piece, I would prefer to not have as much dilution, but at the same time, I recognize the great work that those engineers and data scientists do. So they deserve to be rewarded. And I hope that as the company grows, um, it becomes less and less of their, um, their initial um, awards. And I think a lot of it has to do with, they originally were a private company. Now that they're public, I don't think that they could keep up the share-based compensation, but you still have that lag from prior to when they were public and that's gonna feed over into the first couple of years. So I anticipate as that rolls off, then there'll be um, less and less. The PR could be a little bit better, I will say. Uh, but at the end of the day, I like how Carp attacks his criticize criticizers. Everyone wants the stock to just moon overnight. But, you know, I was investing in 2020 because of my experience back in 2016, 17, and 18, working with the company, building it for an oil and gas company, um, building their product for an oil and gas company, rather, and acknowledging that it's a long-term play. And then you had these people jumping in, expecting it to moon like it did from the end of 2020 to you know January, February, 2021, when it went from 10, $15 a share up to 45 bucks and then back down. That's what people are chasing after. That's not why I joined, right? That's not why I invested. I invested because I know the people that are helping create the company from the ground up. I worked with them. I was a stakeholder in their success and I wanted to be a shareholder in their success. So I'm okay when CARP says 30% annualized and I recognize that the revenue is gonna be bumpy and cyclical. It's not like it's a consistent up into the right business. Until they get more sales folks, um, it's going to be bumpy. And once they get to the point where they have enough sales folks coming through the door, then revenue, I think, will smooth out a little bit. But until then, you're going to be relying on big contracts. Um, and those big contracts are going to show up in lumps. And you have to think that some of these contracts have rolled off, right? A lot of the pandemic um, contracts are probably rolling off at this point, where now you're trying to not only offset off of those contracts that are off now due to the pandemic, but also increase. So fully offset and then increase your revenue year over year. And the fact that the Googles, Amazons, and Palantirs haven't gone down after having big clients um, during the pandemic, and obviously people work at home, e-commerce, everything exploding, and um, Palantir obviously having the contracts associated with the pandemic, the fact that they haven't gone into negative revenue um, or anemic growth is, is pretty interesting and should be considered, um, especially when you're starting to see a lot of the companies that have struggled in 2021 and 2020. So.